I don't know where it's recording to. <laughs> where it's recording. Okay, Bismillah. I don't know how to do it. Okay, tamam. Uh, okay, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, we're continuing with our, with our book, as I was mentioning this morning, uh, Kalima was sharing the villa of what Habib Omar was saying this morning. So I was sharing every, every Thursday morning, right, before the khatam of the Quran, right, right after the Latif, before the khatam, Habib has a short Kalima. I used to be very short, and <laughs> now it's getting longer and longer, mashallah. Right, so today I think it took almost, almost 20 minutes, and Habib was talking for quite, quite, quite some time. And he, from the beginning of the Kalima, he went into deep issues <laughs> in regards to the Quran. And today's Kalima was all about uh, bringing to life. Uh, bring it to life, right? So bring the different aspects of a human being to life, right? And and um and it go and around the how the surahs in the Quran, right, brings a human being in every aspect to life, right? So he said that and he and he explained the life of the heart, what is that? The life of the ruh, what is that? The life of the mind, what is that? The life of you know your your physical body, what what is true life of your physical body, and then the life of you know the different aspects, different dimensions of the human being. How, what does it mean when it's brought to life you know mashallah, mashallah. and 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 um and he's mentioning also about about the, the different surahs and how the different surahs bring to life and uh mashallah, it was the whole the whole thought was about life you know of true life right uh, what is true what is true life right? so for example the life of the heart right is to be completely aware of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so a dead heart is a heart that co is completely hideous of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right um uh, uh not not you know not at all sensing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what Watching it, right? So like the atheist, for example, is the most dead heart, right? Because they cannot even sense the day is gone. Uh, they can't even go into the go into the creation, into the wilderness, right? into nature. They can't even feel the day is gone. That right? is a completely dead heart, right? For 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 a normal you know person, human being. I mean, for for natural human being, a natural human being in their fitra, if you go into nature, straight away you will sense the day is gone. Straight away, no one has to tell you about the day is gone. Right? You go into the deserts, you go into the jungles, you go into the mountains, right? you go to anywhere, and even just look at the sky again. Right? Look at the sky, and you're like, confirm there is God. Right? It's not even not even a question, right? To ask is there God? Right? But because their, their hearts are so dead, they can't even sense that God is there, you know, in their heart. They can't even feel it that He is existing. Then there are levels of the of the heart, lah. The, the, the living of the heart. Right, so the more the heart is alive, and some of them wherever they go, they sense Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we say that you know how about how about Maryam's story like, I'm going off of Habib's talk, but this this is what I was talking about lah, mashallah. So how Maryam, mashallah, she was mentioning one story about Habib, about um Fatim Muqaddam's son, right? Whereby he sent out the son um to the the sons were sent out to uh, bring their to 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 get food for their animals, right? To 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 harvest, right? To harvest and get. Plants with the animal. So one of his sons, I forgot which one of his sons, went out and came empty-handed, right? And then, um, and then the the uh, uh, said to him, like, why are you empty-handed? And he said, yeah, my father, I can't cut a single leaf because every time I come to a leaf, I hear a tasbih, mm -hmm. and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't cut a single leaf. <laughs> I hear the tasbih of every single leaf. How can I kill these leaves? You know, Subhanallah. <laughs> and some people who are like the, the heart is so alive right, that they can even sense, you know, the other creatures creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, mashallah, it's really like um that is the, the life of the heart. Right? So the more the more your heart is alive, that the more wherever you go, right, you just sense Allah, sense Allah. Since Allah, I don't see anything except that you see Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Because the awliya like that, they did everything. They see Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala first. Right? So the Fakim Muqaddam son. Yeah. I forgot his name is Ali, Ali or Alawi, one of the sons of the Fakim Muqaddam. It's in uh, Jawahar Shafaf. How about what? Tell me the story in Jawahar Shafaf. Right? So, mashallah, the, the life of the, the life of the mind. Because the, the, Quran, the Quran brings to life. The Quran is life. Right, because um, one of the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he went once went past. Um, I think Sayyidina uh Sayyidina Kaab bin Ubay or something. One of the one of the Sahaba he went past. This is one of the stories with, with regards to the Tafsir Surah Fatiha. When you go to Surah, 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 Surah Fatiha Tafsir, you go past the story, right? Because the story is is about Surah Fatiha. Right, so basically there was one time Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went past um one of the Sahaba, and the Sahaba was praying, right, and in, in the masjid, and Rasulullah called the Sahabi. Right, so he called him to come to me. Right, so by right, if you're praying a sunnah prayer, <laughs> right, and your parent or the prophet, so some calls you, wajib for you to break the prayer, go to him. 
right wajib eh <laughs> right so so I mean, unless you know your parent is okay if you continue your prayer lah you know like your prayer like just at the moment so then my mother call me <laughs> And right, so if you know your mother will be okay with you continuing, right? Then you continue. But if you know your mother, like like for example, they shout, they, she shouted your name. That means something is urgent. She shouted shout, your name, and you like, and you continue praying. No lah, <laughs> and confirm there's something going on. She needs help, or maybe she fell or something. You never know what happened, right? So so if it's sunnah prayer, break. Right, we know the story of Jurich. His mother kept calling him. Right, he kept ignoring his mother. So yeah, Allah, my prayer, my mother, my prayer, my mother. Eventually, he kept choosing his prayer. Eventually, the mother doa against him, <laughs> and the doa happened. The doa happened. The mother got angry. The mother was like, I "Keep calling my son. He keep praying and praying." Right, I was being sunnah. I was being sunnah. He said, "Ah, wajib tak? Ah, wajib. You continue. Wajib. You finish. Wajib. So now you break." For your mother, for your father, yes, you break. For the Prophet Sallallahu you break, right? Uh, uh, because why is it to answer them, right? So, uh, I won't go to the story of Jurej, because Jurej is story. Because um, Hapimah, you mentioned the story of Jurej, he's an abid, not alim. Uh, he's, a, he's a worshiper, not a scholar. So, he didn't know it was more afbal to answer the mother than to continue the sunnah. Right? He didn't know that it was more afbal. Right? So when the mother made dua against him, you will not die until you see the face of a prostitute. Apa dah dua mana dia? The mother, the mother's dua, you know, so like, macam dashat. <laughs> Masya Allah, the mother's dua. <laughs> right? So, ya Allah, ya Allah. What kind of dua is this? <laughs> but then the mother was so annoyed. And he did, he did see the face of a prostitute before he died. Right? And he remembered, this is my mother's dua. <laughs> Good, there was, there were people who hated him. And they, and they like, paid money to a prostitute to go and seduce him. But she couldn't because he always focused on his, on, his, on his worship. Even for his mother, he won't break his worship. For a prostitute, he will. He won't. La. <laughs> right? So he was so focused. So his prostitute eventually like, got, got so frustrated. She went um, to a shepherd right? and she got pregnant from him. Then she said, the son is Jurej's son. Liar. La. She's lying. Right? So Jurej, they, 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 burnt, they, they burnt down his um, worship his place of worship and worship of Matt, Matt they, they, they broke it down and they destroyed it and he said what's wrong with you all why are you breaking my, my worship place he said you are a liar munafiq and you pretend to be so righteous and you make this prostitute pregnant and, and, and it's a lie lah he said show me the baby and he brought the baby then the, the prostitute came lah with the baby then he looked at her my mother's dua <laughs> My mother made this dua against me. I will see the face of a prostitute. <laughs> like my, mother, my mother's dua. Like he just poked the baby's stomach and asked the newborn baby, who is your father, the boy? <laughs> and the baby, because he's a wali. And the baby was like, the shepherd. Huh? <laughs> right, not me. <laughs> it's a shepherd, right? Uh, and then the, and the people said, "We were so sorry. You built you built your your worshipful place with um by, with gold." Then he was said, "No, no, no, no. Just build it again with uh, mud and leave me alone, please." <laughs> but then he knew my mother's dua. It's so my mother's dua. <laughs> right, so anyway, up at um, see lah where we go through there. <laughs> right, but up at um, uh, so Habib was mentioning about I don't know what what we were talking about. See lah, too too hard, eh? Why are you going to Jurej? Sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh yes, correct. <laughs> See lah, the, the story one story go to another story go to another story. No, this for how about this? <laughs> now I'm doing the same thing. But when I ever try to how about how about like like she go from doing doing stories, we've been the story, she go to the story. No, I but I was thinking to myself, she always says this lah. No, no, fly do the same thing. <laughs> so I felt um yeah. So there was some there was a there was a man who went past. Also went past a man. He called the man. Right, I think it was in a cabin, uh, uh, cabin away, right? Um, and and he was praying, but he finished his prayer. So after he finished praying, he came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Rasulullah said to him, "Why did you come to me when I when I, when I called you? Right? Have you not heard Allah's words? Oh, you who believe in the Quran, oh, you who believe, um, uh, uh, respond to Allah and His Prophet when they call you to what brings you life." Right, this is ayat in the Quran. Eh? To what brings you life, right? Oh, you who believe, respond. Right, respond. As a decision is wajib. As some call you is wajib syllabic and answer or some then then. They didn't have you not heard Allah's you know Allah's command in the Quran that uh, to respond to Allah and His Prophet when they call to what brings you life. Right, so he's saying the Sahabi, you should have broken your prayer. Because uh, Sahabi said, yeah, so sorry, I was praying. Right, then he responded in that ayat. Right. So the ayat says, respond to what brings you life. There are some said to the Sahabi, shall I not teach you of the greatest, the greatest um, uh, surah in the Quran? 
Uh, so again, what brings you life? Right? So what brings you life? The surahs in the Quran. We well, shall not tell you about the greatest surah in the Quran. And the Sahabi said, Yes, Rasulullah, of course, tell me. Tell me what is the greatest surah in the Quran. And the Rasulullah said, Before I leave the masjid, I will tell you. <laughs> he has his ways of teaching. Nah, Rasulullah. <laughs> so, um, the suspense, right? And he has, like, he'll say something, then he'll leave it there for a while. <laughs> then he'll go off, you know. Like, and it's to show. To, to see, you really want to know, really want to know that. So he said, I will tell you before I leave the masjid. Okay? <laughs> and then he stopped there. <laughs> and then the sahabi was waiting in the masjid, waiting, waiting, waiting. And then even Rasam got up, and then he was going to go out. I think it was some time, like, or some period of time. He was going to leave the um, the masjid, and the sahabi ran after Rasul. So said, Rasulullah, the greatest surah, the greatest surah, you told me, you told me. You're going to tell me, you're going to tell me the, what, is it, what is the greatest surah. Right? So I think it's like a test. Huh? You really want to know or not? Right? You're going to watch me when I'm like, about to go out of the masjid, you go and chase me. <laughs> if you really want to know. Right? If you forget to chase me, then okay, go on. <laughs> you know, mashallah. It's a way of teaching, eh? Mashallah. You tell your child, you want to do this story? Right? Before I before we go somewhere, you better ask me. You don't ask me, you don't get it. <laughs> and the kind of thing like really, you know, mashallah, like there's a very um it's a very strong tarbiyah going on. Like, and, and the sahabi remembers. Right? Because you because when you have desire for something, you remember it. Uh, you forget. Right? So, 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 so said to him, How do you what do you read in your prayer? And he says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. He says that one. That one is the greatest surah in the Quran. Right? Surah Fatiha. Right? This, is, this is a story that will buy you, you, you will come through when you go through. Surah Fatiha Tafsir. Uh, tafsir Surah Fatiha, you will find this story there. Right? So, mashallah, um, um, and when you go through Tafsir of the Quran, which is why I mentioned before, so that the Monday night jalsa right, is a must for everybody right, who follows Habib Umar. Right, or who just wants their life to be their hearts to be um alive, right? Who wants to follow the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Monday night tafsir. The Monday night tafsir. Now it's translated into Malay, into English. Right. Both are both have Malay and English. Right. And and of course Arabic Habib Omar speaks. Right. So and when is it yes? Uh, is it in the right? I was waiting for it. I think they were having their their rehla. <laughs> right. The Wednesday, last Wednesday of uh Safar, they were having their Apa? Mida. Mida eh. Ah, they're having it like that's what I'm going. Yeah. So Wednesday also is related. So and Habib mentioned before those who leave Tari, right? Three things never let go. Monday night Jalsa, Wednesday night Ihya, right? And Thursday Maulid. The kalima specifically of Habib Omar are three things. So all these three things are translated into Arabic and into English and Malay, right, for the benefit of all. So those who are in Tarim, even more, <laughs> you should not be, you know, heedless of these three things that Habib pointed out to anyone who's leaving Tarim. If you can't follow his lessons, at least these three don't let go, right? And no excuse because all, both of all three are translated. <laughs> you know, mashallah. Like the mashayikh, um, they are already on it lah, to, trans to, trans to translate the, 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 the three. So mashallah, um, so the the uh so, so to what brings life to the, the, the habit mentioned the this the Quran the law proves that the Quran is what it brings you to life. So like, for example, the life of the mind. And the life of the mind is the ability to tadabur, right? the ability to ponder. So many human beings have dead minds, right? Because they are, I mean, of, of this on Mars yet. Like watching watching mass yet, right? All these videos and, and games and computer games and whatever nonsense, right? They have dead minds. They cannot ponder anymore. They cannot ponder. Their mind cannot reach beyond just the surface of the words. They can't actually go into the ayat. So even if they sit there with the ayat and look at the ayat, they can't ponder. They can't they can't pull out the, the deep secrets, you know, the, 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 the lights, the meanings in this ayah. They cannot. Right? Some and we, and we read our stories of Aulia who can stand the whole night in prayer and just repeat one ayat. That is why they keep repeating and repeating and repeating the whole night in solat with one ayat. Because why? Right? The, the mind is so alive that the mind keeps pulling out you know lessons after lessons after lessons after meanings after meanings of the secrets and secrets and light and light and light and light and light, and light right? from this mind that is alive. Right. So much um the story of Imam Shafi is a very famous story of Imam Shafi Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, right? whereby Imam Shafi came and Shum al Khatib uh, quote this, quoted this story last week in his khutbah about uh, bringing up children. Right, that's it. Khutbah, mashallah. I still don't translate anything of that khutbah, but still, it's so amazing, mashallah. The very, very, very famous story whereby 
Ahmad bin Hanbal um, had Imam Shafi'i over right um, to his house, and before Imam Shafi'i came, he told his um, his child, right, his, his his daughter, that my sheikh is coming, my sheikh is coming, and he is a great sheikh. And the daughter was like, "Who is this sheikh? And my great, my my most beloved sheikh is coming." And he was he kept, he kept praising and praising and praising Imam Shafi'i. So the daughter was like, "Kila, watch and see who is this sheikh." You know, and Jamal Khatib mentioned this story because of to teach our children to always host no done with the ulama right to just to zone with the mashaykh right so um so this is sorry happens that mashafi came right? and imam shafi he ate a lot of food that night right the, the dinner was served he ate so much the daughter was watching from the side the daughter was like was like um hmm. <laughs> right, what kind of alim eat so much food <laughs> like, all that judgmental eh? <laughs> I saw Zon judgmental, Allah Alam. Like, the story I heard, I heard both ways, but I don't know which one is correct. I heard whereby they say it was Imam Ahmad went to see Imam Shafi'i, and I've, I heard whereby Imam Shafi'i went to see Imam Ahmad. Last week, Shimon Khatib quoted Imam Shafi'i went to see Imam Ahmad. Right, so I heard, I heard both both narrations. Seems and it's story, but <laughs> sometimes you must go and check where is the source of the story. Right? Who visited who? <laughs> Mashallah. But either way, they're all great, great alim. So the daughter was watching and the daughter was like, this alim is eating so much food. Like, what is wrong with this alim? Alim not supposed to eat so much food. Man, they're supposed to, to be have zuhud. Again, now he's like gorging all the food. Right? He's so judgmental. <laughs> so fun. Like, and then she prepared the um pail right, next to his bed right, for him to take wudu. Right. And then um, so in the morning, right, he, she saw the water was untouched right? and somehow she was spying on him and she saw that he did not um, get up from the bed the entire night. Did not pray tahajud. <laughs> so I don't know why she was spying. Like, and he's like, so busy, busy, busy body. <laughs> I wish you want to see like, how good this person is. Right? So she was like spying, spying. And he's like, he was on his bed the whole night. Did not get up from the bed at all the whole night. Right. And then Subo got up. Went straight to the masjid with, 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 with Imam Ahmad and Salah. Right. Did you think wudu? <laughs> <What's the word? laughs> this, is, no, no, this is weird. Lah. I mean, okay, this wudu you should take, right? <laughs> like, did you even know wudu was there? Was tough, Allah, Azim. So she went to her father and said, like, I don't know what's so amazing about your sheikh, right? but I saw three flaws about him. <laughs> and his daughter, mashallah, so Uzzan, mashallah. <laughs> right, the, first, the first thing I saw, that he ate so much greedy, right? <laughs> so much. It's not this, the, the trait of a, of, a, of a righteous person or a scholar to eat so much. You don't eat like that, oh, oh father. Right? Your shit is like that. Second thing, didn't wake up with the hajjud. <laughs> I was watching him. <laughs> Did not wake up with the hajjud. Stuff Allah as him. Third thing was the worst. He went to play super without wudu. <laughs> right, mashallah. Right, so he said, he played super without wudu. Subhanallah. And then Muhammad wake up. He said, let's ask him. Yeah, I'm very sure he has reasons for what he has done. This is basically the student having yaqeen in the sheikh. That whatever my sheikh does, I know he's doing something correct. Right? This is you don't understand what he's doing. Right? Let's ask him. Name him, name him. And you know, um, by right, he didn't have to defend himself. Like, you know, by right. Or because the daughter had Suzon, you know, and the daughter had all these issues with her. Okay, let's clarify. Right? And then let's, to, to, to say something, to clarify is good to prevent Suzon. Uh, so Rasul so, so once he was talking with, with, with his daughter, with his um, wife, Sophia. And she was talking with Sophia uh, in, the, in the night, in the dark. And she was covered. And there were two Sahabi walking in his way. And all of a sudden, they all turned and walked the other way. I uh, so much like something happened. So he called out. He says, wait, wait, wait. Uh, and he started something called out. He said, it's Sophia. It's Sophia. Don't think it's anyone else. It's just my wife, Sophia. And they were like, yeah, Rasulullah, of course, we won't think better of you. I right, won't think some other woman. I mean, I mean, of course, you won't think better of you. But he said, Razumi said, but shaitan swims in the veins of human beings. Right? So where you're able to stop a su'uzon, you stop it by explaining uh, what, what just happened. So you don't su'uzon me. <laughs> right? So there's actually a sunnah of, of clarifying something to prevent a su'uzon. Uh, so because shaitan very quickly will whisper to people, oh, he's, the prophet is talking with some woman in the night. <laughs> he's his wife. <laughs> no, inshallah. Right, so, um, so they call Imam Shafi'i. Say, my daughter has three issues <laughs> with you. You eat too much, you don't pray tahajud, and you pray subuh without wudu. <laughs> so um, please explain to my daughter, right? What was, what was it about? So Imam Shafi'i was like, who cooked the food last night? And Imam Ahmad said, my daughter, she cooked the food. And Imam Shafi'i said, she was reciting Quran, wasn't she? And then the daughter said, yes, I was. I was doing a khatam. 
and they do hot time in one meal eh. <laughs> and they all watch they cook they cook one lunch one dinner they do what the <laughs> I said she was doing she was reading the Quran right so the doctor said yes I was doing Quran during when I was cooking the meal and he said the Quran entered the meal uh, the Quran entered I mean from my first bite I can sense right there is barakah in this food I so I eat as I to my fill because of the barakah in the food. And you can see the, 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 the effect of the Quran, the life of the Quran entered the food and brought Imam Shafi'i to life. Right? Now his mind came to life, his heart came to life. He's a higher level. He's really like Imam Shafi'i, mashallah. He's really, really much full of life. So now his mind became very high in life. Then he said, after all that food I ate, from the barakah of the food I ate, when I lay down on my bed, my mind could not stop. You know, pulling out masala, 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 masala from one hadith. So the whole night, my mind that was now brought so, so, to so much life, so much life in the mind. My mind, if one masala or one hadith, and the hadith was ya Abu Omer ma faala nughair. It was that hadith, the hadith whereby some saw you know another small brother who had a who had a, a bird, and the bird died. <laughs> like I said now, and Rasulullah would go and comfort the small boy by the, the death of his bed. <laughs> right. So there was one hadith. From that one hadith, the whole night, Imam Shafi'i was pulling out about 70 different fiqh masala. Fiqh issues from that one hadith. Answers. These are answers from that one hadith of fiqh. More than 70. Right. And, and that came from the food that he ate. Right, that he brought his mind to life so high <laughs> that his mind could not stop, you know, pulling up, pulling up, pulling up, pulling up, pulling up, pulling up all the different, um, you know, answers to fiqh, right? Or, or you said, um, um, principles in fiqh from that one hadith about the bed, <laughs> about the small boy and the bed, and Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam. So he said the whole night, like I was, I didn't even sleep because my mind kept pulling out all the masala, right? So I was lying there, I was lying there and could not sleep. Right. So, of course, when I woke up in the morning, I, I didn't I even sleep a wink, nothing. So, I had my wudu with me. So, I went to principal. <laughs> right. And, of course, Imam Shafi'i being an alim, he knows that to allow for the ilham from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue and not break it with sunnah salah, this is better. Uh, it's more afbal. Right, because right now the you say the the fail, right, the, the flood from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming, right? The flood of of of, of knowledge, of ilmu. It's all you say um ilm la dunni. It's flowing, 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 flowing from Imam Shafi'i from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the Quran in the food. <laughs> you know, so he be an alim between tahajjud, which can be done every day, anytime, and being this this opportunity, this chance, this fursa, whereby you have a flow of of you know a madad or of of knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't cut the flow. You stay with the flow. Unless a wajib comes in, like subo, then you must go and pray subo lah. <laughs> right. Right. So Imam Shafi, he understood that which is more afdal, to get all the mas'ala out and help the ummah or to pray a few rakats. Right. He knew as an alim, this more afdal. Right. It's better to take the mas'ala right. and take the knowledge for the ummah to benefit from. And you can always do a qada of your sunnah later on. <laughs> <laughs> Even Salah said, you can have Qadda, kan? So, MashaAllah, you know, so, so, and then he said, that's why I woke up and I just went to the masjid like that without taking wudu because I had my wudu. I didn't, I didn't sleep the entire night. Like, MashaAllah, you know, and Ahmad was like, so Jumal Khatib mentioned the Qutbah, he, he turned to his daughter and he was like, see, like I told you, like, always think well of our teachers. <laughs> they have their reasons, MashaAllah. That was an example of the, 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 the ihya of the mind, right? The, 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 the Quran in the food brought the mind to life. Right, and that is why, you know, um, the Ruzahra, they always begin with uh, Quran at the beginning. In fact, your day should always begin with Quran at the beginning to bring your mind to life. Right. Uh, you know, whenever you uh, uh, begin your day, lah, right? so you can understand things, you can absorb things, right? even with children, right? at least some Quran, right? some Quran. Right? Even with Surah Yasin, and Surah Yasin is the heart of the, of, of the Quran. So with Surah Yasin, you recite Surah Yasin, right? you need you intend, Ya Allah, this Surah Yasin, I bring my heart to life, bring my mind to life, bring my myself to life. Right? With, the, with the morning Yasins, you do every day. And in fact, Habib also mentioned it today in his, in his Kalimah. The Kalimah, MashaAllah, lah. the whole class is Kalimah, aja, MashaAllah. Right? But it's really, it's really so much. This Kalimah, he mentioned that um, there was once a Wufud, means a delegation, a group of people from outside Medina came to Medina to see Rasulullah Islam. This happened very often towards the end of his life. Right, so some spread far and wide, right, and, and especially after the Muslims conquered Mecca. 
Uh, so when the Muslims conquered Mecca, now it's widespread that the Muslims are in power. Right? The Muslims are the like the the, the like the, the, the the superpower, you know, of the Arab world. Right. So tribes began to come to Medina to pledge their allegiance, right? Their their not loyalty to Rasulullah Sallam, and to pledge their Islam as well to come into Islam. So a lot of tribes began doing it in the in the last few years of life of Rasulullah Sallam, right? Um, and so so there was so there are a few stories about this the, the, the years of the it's called the years of the Wufud, the delegations, the years of delegations. So there was Sabi mentioned one story about them coming after Aisha, right? After Aisha they came and they said with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he taught them. So usually these people they come for about three days, usually. And from here they have the the, the dalil of dauras <laughs> having a daura like a three day intensive a one week intensive a four day intensive because because these people they are from outside Medina they can come from far away in the urban peninsula they could spend like a few days of travel and they can't they can't stay in Medina for so long uh, you can stay for a while pleasure Islam right learn the basics go back right, and teach the people right so some would actually sometimes he would dedicate a sahaba to go and teach them. And sometimes he himself would teach them, right? So he would spend like an intensive, you know, on them, teach farduain, they're done, they can go back, right? So some of them, they will ask for permission to go back. Some of them, they will stay for a week. Some of them will stay for about three days and that's it. And they go off, right? So it, um, so the, the whole night, Rasulullah was teaching them till late at night lah, about Islam. So the next morning, they were waiting for him. Right? After, after Fajr, they were waiting for him to come out and continue teaching them, right? But he came out a little bit late. Right. So when he came again, eh, Rasulullah Sallam, he always explains his behaviors. Eh? He doesn't have to explain his behavior, but he does. <laughs> right? Because he teaches us lessons. Right. So he came out a bit late. And he said, So sorry, I came out a bit late. This is sorry, this morning, happy morning, just mentioned story. I right? said so I came out a bit late because I was finishing my hizb of the Quran that I usually do every night. Last night I didn't do it because I was busy teaching you all. Right. So I called out this morning. MashaAllah. Right. So, so even the Prophet Sallallahu himself. Right, wherever he he has his own amount of Quran that he will recite every single day. Right, so what more the ummah? Right, we have this amount, but if you miss the amount, you do a qada. Right, so in another hadith, Rasulullah said that if you miss your portion of Quran in the morning, then at least do it in the evening. And if you miss the one that is in the evening, do it in the morning. Because uh, sometimes you're tired whatsoever, you miss it. Right? Or when you might fall, fall, fall asleep and you forgot to recite Surah Muluk or Surah Waqia or something. Sometimes it happens. You know, you're busy, things happen. And then all you're tired or sick. Then you went to bed first with a headache. Right? Then in the morning, eh, hey, I didn't do. <laughs> right? Right? This is Surahs and it's your habit. Do it. Just do it. So, but it's really in the morning. Never mind. Just do it. Uh, just do it. Just do a qada, right? Of it to prevent your nafs from getting used to missing out your 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 ibadah. Right? So mashallah, so he was mentioning this this morning, as to and, and he was mentioning Rasulullah is the most alive of all human beings by the Quran, uh, the most alive of human beings. Right? So mashallah, inshallah, uh, can just hear the 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 what the kalima again and translate a few more parts. It was a long kalima, mashallah. Okay, so we continue with our book. So I'm going to make a book. Eh? Um, uh, so mashallah, we're right, we're right at the part whereby, <laughs> Rasul, whereby he says, so bil yawmil akhir, right, and by the last day, by the, by the last day, right, and everything to do with the last day, we spoke about the bridge and the, you know, and, and the skills and, and all of these will come in Aqlilatul Awam that's coming up in this book, right, and wa bikulli ma jaa bihi Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anillahi Ta'ala wa alalika nahya. See, now I have a new meaning to this, to this statement. Eh? On these beliefs, we live. Right? So now the word life has had, now has, has a new meaning to you all. Right? So you think, we live on this aqidah? Yeah, I live my life on the aqidah. Right? What do you mean by live? Right? What is the meaning of live? Right? What is the meaning of life? Right? What, what do you call a life person? You know, and as they will say, how many people walking on the face of the earth, they are dead. And how many people beneath the earth's crust they are alive? You know, mashallah. The awliya who are in their graves, they are more alive. That means more aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are people on this earth, you know, with their phones, in their games, in their videos, and whatever, and they're all dead. Right? They're all dead. And you and you will be so surprised at how people, you know, sometimes when I when I, when I teach, you know, youngsters, I, their mind cannot. You just can't go deep into matters of this religion and understand aqidah matters.
matters or understand uh, fiqh matters or understand even even character the self akhlaq they can't understand because their mind so dead is so dead by what what has killed their mind all these videos lah right all this you know these are all um uh, poisons straight to the mind kills the mind it kills the mind they cannot think beyond they cannot think further right, so even when i was in university i mean i'm in university now like some of the students there they are from sanawiya they are from like um high school they're from high school and some of them have never taken islamic sciences in their life at all some of them <laughs> they went to high school because you can enter into a university by high school diploma right so they have taken just secular subjects <laughs> in their life they in tarim they in tarim or they from other parts of yemen and from aden and so on i but if that's because ustaza anisa um uh mashhur right uh she she tells us fiqh tahulat like she will ask she she went to ask every single student in the class like what have you taken of the sharia no one fiqh tahulat you know of the sharia how much have you learned of the sharia and you be surprised some of them said nothing and she said not even risalatu jami'a nope not last not even not even the smallest smallest book you know like absolute muri not even like like something something basit something very simple not even that she says no nope. and she said like, and you live in tarim <laughs> she's so shocked you know she's like you live in tarim she says yeah tarim me no tarim <laughs> how how is it that you're in tarim when you're not taken even the the smallest book you know smallest book of fiqh or of the sawal the smallest book then you're like because they are teenagers i'm in the class of 18 year olds <laughs> i'm like the oldest person there <laughs> right, but but i mean the teenagers and so what teenagers are in our zaman not in the past eh? in our zaman our teenagers are not they're not alive in their minds they're not understanding things and so i i, I so can realize right in the zahra those who are past 20 right you know the more adult they are i need the, the better in the sense that they can understand what i'm saying to them and those who are too young uh, unless they've been, been given very good training you know some of them their parents mashallah give them very very good training like like uh ustaz uh, um abdullah's um daughter and uh, she came to the zahra just 14 i talk to her sometimes you know uh, amatullah in the zahra she's very young I think she came when she was 14 or something you now she's about 18 eh? or 15 or 16 she's very young right but she has very deep understanding of things you know and she grasps things very well but that is because i know she's trained by her mother <laughs> right so abdullah you know um the one who teaches who taught us in the past in singapore she taught us feminism right she's she's here she came there a few times right so she's in abu dhabi right now so she she is a, is a very deep individual so uh so you know um abdullah um yeah she's she's uh, so, 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 yeah, she's from the abu dhabi from australia originally uh, so her daughter who's only a teenager ah she's here amatullah amatullah's been here yeah amatullah so so amat i call her so now because i met her Five years old, when she was here, yeah, five years old. Now she's sixteen, I think, or fifteen. But I know she came in the Rosara when she was fourteen, right? Um, I made her teach for Dora. <laughs> yeah, she's here. I think she's here. I think she's around. She's an eight daddy too. and that it too right um uh, but when I speak to her in in the Rosara, like I see this this young child, I mean this teenager, it's not like other teenagers. There is a life in the mind that she's able to understand things deeply. So when I explain things to her, she's like, yeah, yeah. You know, and she understands things deeply. You know, um, but but if other teenagers who are not trained in their mind, right, um, you try and speak to them about you know things, it goes past them. They get bored. They can't get it. They they you know in a sense like it makes it means nothing to them. Right, it means nothing to them. So sometimes when I teach the Rosara for those are sometimes are very young, like they, their mind has not matured. in a level right and that whatever we're saying to them uh, it bounces off them and right? so this is why like either when you bring your child to the zahra either you train them on maturity of the mind right or wait a while until they do have a maturity of mind i right? so what how much how much adults stay in the zahra and how much teenagers stay is actually different eh? right? unless a teenager was trained by the adult by by their parents or someone to to take to take from the zahra you know as much as you can because the teachers there really give a lot they give a lot so even in my own um uh, university right now that day i was doing tafsir of surah mujadala 
fine. And and I could see that some of my my friends who are 16, right? They'd be like, oh, so boring. I was like, what? <laughs> The tafsir was so amazing. It was like that like you can feel your heart, you know, trembling in 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 your in your in your chest, right? Because of what the sheikh was saying, you know, yeah. Because they finished the the sanawiya, they finished the high school, they go jami already, right? So <laughs> they're so young, and and I can see that this. So the Anisa was teaching fiqh and she was speaking about all kinds of very big issues. Then my classmate is sleeping. And I'm like, why is she sleeping, Allah? And uh, the the ustaz are like, sabad. <laughs> and literally, I cannot tahan students who, when they sleep, okay, if you're falling asleep like this, I understand you're trying to stay awake. <laughs> right? You're like, this, and, you're, and you're doing this. <laughs> so, okay, because I like, I pity you, you know, okay, you're trying your best to stay awake. I cannot tahan students who do this. No. Uh, doing this, put, I mean, putting a head on the table like this, that means you purposely want to sleep. Right, because you're making yourself comfortable in my class to sleep. Right? I cannot stand the kind of students. <laughs> right, the kind of students where by like on the chair, in the in, in the gym, ah, we're on chairs, <laughs> on the floor. Because it's university, there's table, chair, everything is like you know, <laughs> right, set out. Right, it's on the floor. Right, the, I love the floor. I think floor is so comfortable. Right, my the chair, like the so cram. <laughs> right, so the students who are on the chair, they put their knees up and they hug their knees and they fall asleep. So. It's like, it's like, like you're purposely trying to make yourself sleep. Like I know it's typical, uh, Jamia, uh, some, until one o'clock, our school. So by the time we're 12, 30, <laughs> like you feel so sleepy. I'll bring my, my mints like, from Hala. I got the mints oil. <laughs> now put, I'll put like, like, I'll sniff it to make myself wake up. Then I do the eye exercise. You know how the, in Singapore you were taught last time in primary school? You know the, this one? It works. It actually works. Because it makes your blood flow. I think now I realize what it's for. And I was saying, I used to wonder why in Singapore, they may ask do I exercise in recess time, right? <laughs> Very clear my memory. In recess time after recess, everybody sit down, right? And everybody do the eye exercise, right? All Singaporeans know about this. <laughs> do I exercise? Because myopia was being, was, was rising in Singapore. So they all tried to help children <laughs> improve your eyesight because myopia was increasing. So now I realize that what, what they're doing with all these exercises is massaging is to have blood flow to the eyes. Right, so when I do it, you know, uh, I realize that my eyes get less tired to push the blood to my eyes. <laughs> you know, inshallah. So I've been doing that lah, just to keep myself awake because so used to sleeping at 12 o'clock after that Zahra. Right? So the body already programmed 12 p.m. sleep. Right, so the, the, the class is 12 p.m. I'll be like, so sleepy. But at least it drew you your best to stop lah. So, but mashallah, I will see my student, my, my own classmates. I thought the tafsir was so good this week. I want to share some of the gems from Surah Mujadala. You know, on my Facebook, I never got time to type anything out. <laughs> right, tapi, um, like, so beautiful to this. The, 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 the tafsir of Surah Mujadala, the first few ayat, you know, she was talking about, um, there's one ayat whereby the one who makes space for people. I don't know about the ayat whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the believers, that all believers, right, when you're in the majlis, then make space. Make space for people, right? Allah will have mercy on you, right? When you make space for people in the majlis. And this, the story was that, mashallah, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam kan, right? The Sahaba really loved to be around him. Of course, who doesn't like love to be around him? So he was sitting in the majlis, and there was some ansar around, right? Um, and some and some youngsters were near him. So a group of people for, who fought in Badr came in. Right, and they gave salam, and it was a full match Islam, right? And it's like Kubar, you know, like, like big Sahaba who came in, right? And then, <laughs> and then they give salams. They seem to be like, like, like chopping their place, <laughs> like reserving their spot. Okay, I came first. <laughs> I'm gonna be in front of the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> So it became. And some saw what was going on. Nah. There was this selfishness that was going on. But over goodness. Okay. But there was a type of selfishness going on that, you know what? They were like, no, my space, my space. <laughs> you know, right? So Rasulullah, you know, to it, um, he, he, and this were like elderly, uh, elderly Sahaba who are the first few to Islam. They have an, a, a level for themselves that you should talk to them. I like bring them, you know, um, to the front, that kind of thing, you know, that, that how the people here, they always do. The Habaib here, whenever they see anybody of position or people of age, just age, or alim, right, they will always talk to them. They come see us here, they see us here. You know, they will, they will give them the space, right? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, um, he began to say, to, he began to say to people, you, move over there. 
you move over there you he began to, to to arrange people to arrange and he could see or he could see on their faces some macam <laughs> dislike on the faces of these people they were up there about it. this is just as babunus of the ayat they were sitting in my jam yeah these are things that they really is so beautiful it's something from the from the ayat and you learn this right and you move there and so their faces all became like, like but they still move lah you know they still move <laughs> you know because um it's, it's instruction from rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he called one of the biggest sahaba come sit here and you sit here you sit here right so he began to open to, to really make space in the majlis and then he saw again the sunnah his sunnah lah eh? his sunnah 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 mawaqif his sunnah is to try to comfort people when they are upset so by right they should not be upset in the first place because they yeah, I mean, <laughs> Is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi He's doing what he's doing. He knows what he's doing, right? But he saw in their faces, you know, there's some any <laughs> right, unhappiness in the face. So he began to explain himself. See, right? Mashallah, Mashallah. Always he will always do this. He will explain himself. He doesn't have to. Does not have to. They should sue on. They should sue. They should sue on him. I have a good opinion of him, but he will always do that. Rasul Sallam because it's so not to do that to try and remove unhappy emotions in people. He try his best to do that. Right. So he said, um, "The one who makes space for others in the majlis, may Allah forgive him." Right? He made that dua. Then everybody happy already. <laughs> Get the dua. Then from there, they always make space when they come. Come, 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 come. You know, like, like they say, "Come sit here. Don't sit in front of me. Don't sit here." They won't even like, like, like try to 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 hog the place and like don't make space. Uh, you must go and tell your children. Eh? <laughs> who makes space for other people? <laughs> right? Don't try and like, take up as much space as you can. <laughs> you know, mashallah. And you get, you get, you know, mashallah. Um, the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. As you consider others to make space for others, to allow for people to attend the majlis, to open up, right? To be as um, inclusive as possible. That is, and that is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was never exclusive. You cannot find a single time in his in his era whereby he was exclusive. Some people, you know, can get the khair, others cannot get the khair. You know, he was he was inclusive. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nam. Now, we call him Majaa bihi and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam an illahi taala. So everything has come to us from our beloved beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Allah subhanahu wa taala. And what has come to us are from him sallallahu alaihi wasallam basically the Quran. His hadith, his sunnah, right? Um, you have his uh prophecies, right? The what he will tell us that will happen in the future, right? You have things about the akhirah, samayat, right? So these are things whereby you hear from our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and basically we make this this general statement in our akidah in the mujmala, right? To cover all, so whatever Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, we believe in it. Ah, so the fakhus mili jumalan, walat talibni bit. Tafsir is a part of our akidah. Not not here, but another akidah. Every maghrib they will recite. Fakhus minni jumalan, wala tu talibni bit tafsir, which means, Ya Allah, take me entirely. Let me take my akidah entirely. I believe in all right that the Prophet Sallam has brought, and don't ask me about specific things. <laughs> right, I right. don't check my akidah about specific things because maybe some parts of the akidah you may not answer properly or whatever, or maybe your mind is not is not is not is not um. Reach it. Don't ask me about it. <laughs> That's what the Akira says. For who's min ni jumalan, wala to talib ni bit tafsil. Right? Don't take take the whole statement. I believe in all that the system came with full stop. Don't ask me. What. <laughs> right? Just say. So it's it's so it's called it's called you know for all. It's for the awam. It's for the public. I right? so ask me specifically. You know about matters that he spoke about. I might not know about these things. <laughs> right? So it's Allah's mercy on the awam. Right, on the general public, the general Muslim, right? That is easy for you all. You see, I believe in all. Alhamdulillah. Right? Don't ask me on the day of judgment about specific matters of this akida. <laughs> okay, I take for me all. Then bit bit of sin. Um, right now, um, right? Uh, so inshallah, this one will there be more to speak about. So for the example of his of, of his statements about the future, right? So about the future, there is one of the studies in fiqh tahawlat, right? About the future. Right, that you must believe in what he said. That it it is true. It will happen. That like it is true. It will happen. Right. So people like if, and I I wouldn't say this. People denying, right, that we are right now in a 
Akhir Zaman, I'm not sure who does that, but is there, if there is someone who's denying that we are in Akhir Zaman right now, then that is um, going against the words of Rasulullah SAW, where he said, Bu'istu ana right? Um, I was sent, me as a prophet, and the hour like this too. And he placed his, his pointer finger and his little finger together, right? So this tells us that already in his zaman, akhir zaman, like his zaman, so those who deny that right now, when akhir zaman, where are you? Right? What are you thinking? <laughs> and those who deny, and those who deny, those who deny that, you know, and there are Muslims who do this, that there is evil through the media, what are you thinking? Right? Why are you denying that? Uh, if you if you if you have an addiction, you know, or if you are watching all this stuff and you can't stop, at least admit it's evil, lah. You know, I <laughs> don't say it's okay. What? Uh, I that right there saying it's okay. What? What is okay about it? Now uh, even after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because all that's in there goes against him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when they when you watch people watch YouTube, when they watch their TikTok, they watch their now the the howla wala kwa Alhamdulillah for tarim and our internet <laughs> it stops you from doing a lot of things yeah, because you're just like i can't do anything you know <laughs> because it's not loading anything <laughs> you know and mashallah you know i, I see the, tarif, the, the karamat of the internet here that when habib omar is online <laughs> it works <laughs> you want habib omar you know his youtube hey it's smooth mashallah <laughs> you know and then you try and you, you try to do all other things nothing nothing works <laughs> Right, like, so uh, mashallah, alhamdulillah. You know, this is all the 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 blessing of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, so so what he has informed us, and like, what he has informed us, right, that we take it fully, we believe in it, right, we do not, you know, brush it aside. Right, so that's what we mean by whatever he came with, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and there were many things that he came with. Right, like how he would say um, that in the future, the munkar, the shi'ut shi'ut one sahaba, how will it be? I think we're saying that even my point. How will it, we're saying Abu Dhar al-Ghafari, how will it be when you witness a time, and he did witness a time, whereby people will command to evil and they will stop goodness? How will it be? Right, when you come into a time where people are commanding to munkar. So instead of Amr bin Ma'aruf, it's Amr bin Munkar. And instead of nahi anil munkar, is nahi anil ma'aruf. Right? This is his prophecy. Eh? There will come a time people will be doing this. Right? They will command to goodness, and they will command to evil, and they will forbid goodness. And in fact, it will come a point whereby marriage between male and female is seen as something despicable. There will come a time. So scary. I don't want to see the time. Like whereby male and female marriage is seen to be low and like, you know, like how in the, like the whole thing fit something so, so natural and so, so good. I don't come as a man, I don't, we don't see the zaman, I don't want to see the zaman whereby people to, to marry naturally, right, people look down on you. That the male and female are getting married. I know me, but this zaman will come. And we're learning all these hadith, like all these hadiths like, so many things he's saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will happen. Right? They will happen. And that is why, that is why he will give the solution, right, to say that never be okay with it. There is a least you can do. Never, if you cannot stop it, right, if you cannot be strong in your, in your iman and your, and your um, amal and everything, if you cannot be strong, then at least never be okay in your heart with it. Never be okay. Don't allow yourself to say it's normal. Never allow yourself, don't even embrace the culture. Like some of the Muslims online, I've seen them, and I've spoken to them as well on my on the my safe space. They, they they have embraced the culture of the of the pronouns. But he still was like, what pronouns? <laughs> you know what's going on right now in the world, right? You know what's going on in the pronouns, <laughs> right? Um, female is he, she, she and her, right? Male is he and him. So we know it's normal. Many people you call them they, right? In 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 um, English, uh genderless um thing like a cup is called it <laughs> right um a cat they don't know its gender it's called it unless you know its gender is female they call it she right so now they have they, they, they have declared they are there is no such thing as gender and some of them declare they are non-binary which means they are not male nor female and some of them declare this from the muslim side 
the Muslims they call it just like the angels. So it's like the angels, right? The angels are not male nor female. We are like angels. <laughs> We're like amoebas. We have no male or female. We got angel amoebas without. You know, amoeba got no male or female. Okay, amoebas they 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 reproduce reproduce by splitting. Like we're like angels. I saw one 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 book. It's called a popular book about this this kind of individuals lah. She re of say the Quran herself. Oh, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And said that she's like, Allah. Allah is not male and female. So there is more divine to be no gender. Wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. It's so, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. But the thing about it is that Muslims, even if you don't subscribe to saying no gender, don't use his pronoun thing. Don't say, oh, I go by him, her. And, and I, <laughs> I go by what? <laughs> she, 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 her. Obviously, I'm a female. Can <laughs> let to go around saying, um, my pronouns are he, uh, sh, what? She, she, her. <laughs> my pronouns are she, her. Yeah, I can see you wearing a hijab, right? You're not having a beard. <laughs> You're a female, obviously. <laughs> let me go around saying, my pronoun, my fist tells you that I'm a she. <laughs> right? So, there are Muslims who are not any LGBT. They are not non-binary. They are not ethnic. But they are putting in their profiles Right in their Facebook, in their Instagram, pronouns she her. That are your name, Fatima. <laughs> you know, if your name is Khadija, if your name is Noor, if your name is Maryam, of course you are a she her. Right? <laughs> Never tell me you're a she her. <laughs> right, mashallah. So don't even embrace the culture. And this is pointed out. Don't even embrace the culture because you're going against the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said to dislike it. The minimum you can do, if you can't stop them from the nonsense, from the nonsense pronoun, now now got got zila, got you know what la nonsense, so, so nonsense la how la wala. That is the z up and down there. The the they call it this z something. How la wala kunta la bila. And they're calling individuals they. Yeah, they. Why? Because they has no gender. <laughs> it's so weird. So they're having a child. See, my child is genderless. Right, not she has to choose her own gender. So for now, I say they are over there, but it's one child. Right, this is theirs. Who? Which people? <laughs> if one, you're ruining our English. <laughs> right, you're ruining our English language. Come on. Right, but it's something so widespread, and Muslims are embracing it. Even if they are not LGBT, they are embracing it. And that's the musibah you're going against our prophet. So the Muslim who say, you see a munkar, at least they hate it. If you can't stop this nonsense from going from happening. At least hit it and don't go around saying your pronouns. The howl of a quarter of them. If somebody asks, What's your pronouns? Look at my face. <laughs> I look like a what boy <laughs> you know? or a girl. Think. <laughs> don't, even, don't even ascribe to it. Don't even like, you know, oh, I go by she, her. Obviously, I went to do. Right, my name is Farhana. <laughs> right, obviously, I am a woman. Right, don't even, don't even, don't even embrace it. Don't even embrace it if you are true to your faith. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you won't even embrace this rubbish. Right? It's complete rubbish. Nah. It's complete rubbish. And I'm wondering how they're going to do it in, in Arabic. Because <laughs> Arabic has a community now, right? It's growing in, um, they call it the Najd. Right? Dubai, Yanni, uh, uh, Abu Dhabi, I think. Uh, where else? All these places. Lah. The LGBT community is growing amongst the Muslims. Right? So I wonder how do the Arabs do it there. Eh? Because they have anta, anti, antuma, antum. <laughs> Maybe they go with antuma. Right? <laughs> and they're going to destroy the Arabic language uh, by trying to, because in Arabic is so it. Actually, why can't you use it? Because it's it lah. I call you an it. <laughs> because it is too low. Eh? Like, it is over there, my son. It is. <laughs> it. <laughs> like, it is genderless, what? Right? Use it lah. We already have a uh, pronoun in, in English that is genderless. It's called it. <laughs> but that's for animals. You know, for like you know, non. You know, just. So basically, whatever our came with, to not fight it, right? and to not go against it, and to be aware in your zaman, what is of our culture goes against our prophet. So Allah Yuwasam, and I'll point out very clear things: wasting time, right? It's in our culture the ta- the, the the culture of wasting time watching nonsense goes against our prophet. So Allah Yuwasam directly. Like Li equals against him. Can you find any example in his life where he wasted time? Ever, eh? Abadan, eh? 
So even when he had leisure with his family, when he had, you know, help, you know, like laughing, right? he does have, you know, like um, um, interactions with his family. That shows us a beautiful part of his sunnah, you know, of having, you know, good relationship. So he does have fun, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They do like watch, you know, the Abyssinians, you know, um, doing a display. Right? They, they have their, their camels, you know, racing. Healthy fun. That is sunnah for Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sitting down, you know, the wasting time, watching my asiat with your eyes, right? Where have you seen Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do that? Ever. I ever see there's no TV in his yes, but they had they had they had Marcia right? in his zaman they would put the woman dancing. I mean, amongst the, the kufar, I mean, they would have all this Marcia going on. You will find no example of them sitting down, lepa, you know, hanging around and just watching all this Marcia. Right? And then Muslims now they say that no, it's family time, let's watch Marcia. <laughs> I mean, basically, that's what it is. Why is one movies? Marcia, right? Sin, it's all around sin. Movies, most movies. I mean, I would say almost all, everything, because it makes you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And does he do anything in his day whereby he encourages the, the forgetting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or bil aks? That is the opposite. Everything he does, even in his joking around with his wives, is all remembrance. Even in his mizah, his joking with the sahab, it is all truthful and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, and subhanallah. All right, so this is the example of Rasul Islam. So this is the first thing in the culture of our time. Look around you and see what not that, has, that our Prophet Islam has come with. Right, and stay away from that. What he has come with. Right, so even, even in our culture, and I want to point out all these things to do online as well. Right, our culture of going to theme parks, right, going to play roller coaster. I don't know why. Singapore has a, what, what is it called? Universal Studio, studio. yes. Think about it. All the money spent and the queuing up and the time wasted. And what are you teaching your children in doing this? You want to have family time? Go to the beach. Lah. Singapore Beach, Alhamdulillah, still okay. <laughs> like Singapore Beach, I think for me, lah, but I mean, still no one going around naked. No one going around. Uh, you can find parts in our beach, but it's still clean of any nonsense and his swimsuit or <laughs> whatever you can still find I go Malaysia lah you don't want to go Singapore beaches go Malaysia beaches should be so okay right Malaysia beach <laughs> everybody is like covered they're, 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 they're wearing um, depends where you are the thing is like, yes, like, white people uh, I cannot trust them if they're around uh, so go by the Malaysia go, go to the go to the waterfalls they're all swimming in t-shirts <laughs> they're, they're not even they're not even changed into any swimsuit right it's all like t-shirt and <laughs> I think yeah. Singapore's Malaysian waterfalls. Huh? I went about how was there once before. The you know, Singapore, the Malaysian waterfalls. It's nice. Like go lah, mm-hmm. trekking wherever with your family. Do something healthy. Like mm-hmm. with the family, you know. Um, you don't have to go to place of mass. You know, and this is where you know there's lakna there. Because there's mass yeah, there's lakna. In these places, and you couldn't bring your children there for what? Right. It's all culture of our zaman. People are okaying it. It's not okay. It is not okay. Because will you find our prophet there? No, you won't. He's not going to be there. Right? So seek out the majale, seek out the, the, the mawale, seek out. And now the masjid, the masjid, they're doing things that they're trying to make it, um, you know, um, entertaining for children. So they have mawales and stuff like that. They're trying to make it more fun. Right? They have acting, to have like acting out sira and everything. There's effort being put in to try and attract the children to righteous things, to love what is righteous. And that's the way of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and quite really, really. So we'll stop here for today, inshallah. Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Amin. MashaAllah, someone said that they found a book. So be careful the books your children read. So in this book, they change the pronoun of a female she into a they. This is so confusing. If I'm reading a book in the world, I'm reading day, day, day. I think there's a group of people going on. <laughs> right? And Scully, you find the story, he's a person. <laughs> right. So, I mean, he said now in, in the hospital in America, you don't refer to the mother's she. And no more pink for girls, blue for boys. Yeah, no, they and just, white. yeah, yeah I, I've seen it. I was like, you know what, I hope you know, I, I gave birth to my kids. There was no such thing that he does this.
No more she. Do not refer to mothers yeah. she. So, you, so for us as Muslims, even if you don't, you're not part of that group, don't take their nonsense and apply it to yourself. Because I see Muslims put it on their social media, he slash um, him, like, or she slash her. Don't even do that. Uh, because you're kind of like saying, oh, I agree with this, you know, pronoun assignment thing. <laughs> right? No, Allah gave me my gender, full stop. You know, I'm not gonna choose my gender. Allah gave me my gender. <laughs> Subhanallah. But don't even don't even embrace it. Don't even say it's okay. Right? Even the non-Muslims are fighting it. Eh? When they are fighting this nonsense, right? they are non-Muslims are fighting it. Right? But then, of course, it's the Dajjali wala. Uh, Allah Fatiha. Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة.